Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans. Welcome to the bunker, and it's time for a special live stream. Yes, it's the reveal of the bunker 2.0. That's what I'm calling it. The bunker has been expanded. The bunker traditionally is just this tiny, tiny room that I'm in now that just about has space for my collection of Watchtower materials, my desk, my camera, some lights, a monitor, a few ex-Jehovah's Witness, apostate, atheist books, a sofa uh, that people can sleep on. More about that later. Um, that's about it. Uh, not enough space for if I'm doing things properly and hiring a video editor and starting a production company and all of these things, which all of which have forced me to expand the bunker. So this has been a quite a bit of a dilemma because obviously our plan is to ultimately leave where we're living because of all the recent earthquakes. So we were faced with the dilemma of do we save money and not make an office and just kind of wing it for the eight or nine months until we move and then set up a proper studio in the new place that we're moving to? Or do we build an office for the eight or nine months so that we can work more properly and more efficiently as a team? And if we're building an office, are we building an office or are we bringing in like a trailer solution that's going to get kind of delivered by a truck or something like that? So we had all of these decisions to make and in the end we decided to hire the same builder who built the bunker to also renovate the space beyond the bunker, which I have alluded to in a previous video. Here is a clip from my interview of Arthur Weber in 2019 revealed too much but you you keep a finger in the pie so to speak when it comes to what current jehovah's witnesses are thinking and doing yes. you have your ways of kind of knowing what the chat is exactly in exactly. that direction so that's probably the best introduction and you are also the first person ever to sleep in the bunker Yes. You have slept here for yeah, two I, nights already. I did, I did. Was it comfortable? Yes, it was very comfortable. Excellent. It really felt like home. But I do have just one question. Oh, go on. What's behind that white door there? The white door? I, Arthur, I, I really don't feel comfortable revealing what's behind the white door. That's It's kind of quite personal to me. Oh, do, really? Do you insist on seeing what's behind there? Yes. Yes, okay. because it's been such a mystery these these two days since I've been here, and I've I've been staring at that white door for quite a while, and I didn't even dare to open it. It's kind of a bunker secret, but I feel as though we've known each other for so long. I should probably let you in on it. So let's have a look. Are you, are you are you satisfied now that you've seen that particular secret? I'm mesmerized. <laughs> it's probably going to stay with you for a long time. Yes. <laughs> so that was that was my little skit that I did with Arthur, uh, and it felt only proper that we actually invite Arthur back to give a dedication talk. For the bunker expansion so he will be joining us shortly <laughs> but yes there has always been this space beyond the white door that I have kind of been quite ashamed of because it was just a mess I mean Arthur will tell you it was just basically where we kept loads of stuff like tools there was a freezer a chest freezer there one of my old guitars just random bits of crap basically <laughs> was kept 
on the other side of the wall. Um, and to be fair, it was also used by, you know, Diana's parents for various things. So that was the obvious place for expanding the bunker, but it did need quite a bit of work doing. There were some damp issues and that sort of thing. Anyway, we managed to get hold of the builder that built the bunker and he did a fantastic job. And I have actually put together a montage of some time-lapse footage that I took while the building work was underway. So here it is. Yes, that was a little montage that we put together to show you the building work underway. And today we can reveal the finished bunker because I have with me Tibor. <laughs> Tibor is actually behind the camera, at least to begin with. Let's bring him on. So yes, you can see there Tibor is at his desk. Do we have audio? Is Tibor, are you with us? Can we hear you? Sure, sure. Here I am. Okay, there you are. Fantastic. So, uh, Tibor has uh, his computer all set up. Uh, again, all of this, uh, well, I say again, it, it goes without saying that all of this has been made possible due to the just astounding support of my patrons. So, we've been able to get Tibor the computer editing gear that he needs. Uh, he's got, uh, you know, a, a nice space to work in there. And you can see uh, with some plants on it, that's Deanna's desk. That's where Deanna will be working um, whenever she needs to do accounts and all that sort of thing. And <laughs> this is the cave. I, and the less said about the cave, the better. So there is actually a cave at the, <laughs> at the bottom of the bunker where no man shall pass. Uh, we were at one point thinking about turning it into like a like a restroom or something, like a bathroom with a shower and everything, but there were just too many problems with damp. So we had to basically write it off eventually, and maybe at some point in the future we'll do something with it. But for now, it's just called the cave, and one of my remaining jobs is to put like a door on it so people can't see in. <laughs> and we will empty out all the building rubbish at some point. And so just to the side of the cave, we have our little tea and coffee making area. Again, I have some jobs to do still. I need to assemble a trolley that goes next to it. Uh, but yes, we have a little Dolce Gusto coffee maker there. And uh, we'll be getting, I don't, do we, I don't think we need a kettle because the Dolce Gusto can heat water for the tea. So we have everything we need, maybe a microwave. We could do the microwave. 
And then to the side of that, we have a little toilet. So if ever I'm editing a Stephen Lett uh, JW Broadcasting episode and I feel a sudden urge to vomit, I have some <laughs> somewhere that I can run to. <laughs> so that's our toilet. Um, you have obviously the door. You have a little side desk there. We have the bunker trooper as well standing by, ready to make sure there's no nonsense inside the bunker 2.0. And you also have the white door, and on the other side, you have yours truly. <laughs> so yes, we're now connected. We have a full working studio, and it's great to be working just a few meters away from Tibor. So <laughs> that is our that's our tour. That's our quick bunker two point zero tour. What a fabulous space it is. I'm so thrilled that it's all finished and it's working. And it's been so weird for me to be working here and being able to speak to Tibor. It's, it's been weird to have someone in here with me because I'm so used to working in here by myself, whether it's editing videos, filming videos, doing research, pulling books off the shelf. And uh, yeah, it's, it's so strange to to just have someone on the other side of the wall and to have some company, quite frankly. It's it's really, really nice that this is now a full, proper, functioning workspace. I'm so, so thrilled. And I can now reveal, because he's now back at his desk and he has agreed to actually come on camera. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce all of you, all 423 now on the live stream, to my video editor and colleague, Tibor. Hello, Tibor. Hello, Lloyd. So, Tibor, you joined uh, back in January. You sort of done a few jobs before that because you were so you were quick off the mark and you were wanting to kind of get stuck in. I think when you learned about what I was doing, but you you officially started in January, so you've now got sort of coming up on four months worth of work on the Lloyd Evans channel, um, has it been a shock to the system doing this sort of material because you are not an ex-Jehovah's Witness? Well, I mean, it, it hasn't been so much shock, but it was, uh, yeah, it, it was new, it was different uh, when I thought about my career. Uh, of course, as a video editor, YouTube always crossed my mind but never in the sphere of religious teams and especially not cult-like teams. It was always, you know, about technology, maybe cars or something along those lines. But yeah, never in a million years would have I guessed that I would be working on uh, anti-JW <laughs> material. So, I think yeah. it's safe to say some of the stuff that you're editing continues to take you by surprise. Some of the, <laughs> some of the weird <laughs> crap that we end up commenting on, you know uh yeah uh <laughs> the the characters as i like to call them you know the eight buffoons uh, they <laughs> never cease to amaze me they continue to uh produce such magnificent uh material i i i don't know how to <laughs> honestly express myself without swearing uh <laughs> but yeah it's it's always surprising you know to see what's happening in the 21st century for sure Absolutely. Well, uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be working with you. I, I think we've uh, we've settled into a really good rhythm, haven't we, of uh, working together on different projects. So, yeah, it's working well. And now we get to obviously work together uh, far more closely. Uh, for example, we're currently doing a reboot to my 607 video. And that's the sort of complicated project where you do sort of need to be in fairly close proximity so that you can make decisions kind of on a, on a micro level rather than uh, everything just being done remotely. So yeah, it's really, really good to have you on board. And uh, what do you think, I suppose, importantly about the Bunker 2.0? Uh, yeah, I mean, it will never have the charm of the Bunker 
1.0 <laughs> i suppose yeah. we could call it now uh yeah. but yeah i'm sure you know with time we'll spruce it up with some uh photos and paintings of uh, the eight buffoons so uh yeah maybe maybe we'll do an update video you know just to showcase all of the art that we showcase inside the well because i am up. because i am a generous boss i'm willing to consider parting with my <laughs> picture of tony morris if you want if you want you can have this on your desk I'm, I'm willing to i'm willing to make that sacrifice oh yeah mate i just ran out of space you know <laughs> yeah we bought those big speakers you know it's oh well, otherwise yeah oh I... dear gene walker says this looks fantastic I'm so glad you think that, Gene. We're we're really thrilled with it. Uh, Anna Price says hello, Tibor. Uh, Up Mayo says hi, Tibor. Hi, Tibor. You've been doing a great job. He really has. He really knows his stuff. He's all about the the details. You're, he's he's very detail oriented. So uh, yeah, we're working very well together. Tony Morris actually speak of the devil. Uh, nice to have you with us, Tony. Uh, hi Lloyd, congrats for the bunker 2.0. You and T Board deserve a beer to celebrate. Well, we just had one actually. Just <laughs> we we went for. There's literally a restaurant has fortunately opened up, literally a two minute walk away from where I live. So we we had a a work a work dinner, didn't we? Uh, just before we yep. came on. Uh, Bob from Brum says, "Does T Board want to study?" Tony Morris is in the building. Uh, <laughs> And oh, is, is Diana here? People are saying Diana's here. So welcome, Diana. Uh, <laughs> hell no to Tony Morris's photo. Of course, I have to remember that it's not just about you working there, T Board. Diana's going to be working there, working there as well, and she probably would have something to say if I put Tony Morris's visage in proximity of her desk. I think she'd rather look at those plants, to be honest. Oh, yeah, it doesn't have to anything. be Tony. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure she would agree to like Olette or maybe Brother Waddington, the personal favorite oh, of mine, you know. Brother yeah. Waddington, good grief. What a what a creepy guy. <laughs> okay. So, um we have now a special guest because as I may have mentioned earlier, it just felt like with this being such a significant improvement to the Lloyd Evans channel. And with so much work and effort going in to expanding the bunker, it felt like we ought to have a dedication talk. And to do that, we've brought back a friend. It's Arthur himself. Welcome, Arthur. <laughs> we can't hear you, Arthur. Technology, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll sack the minister. We'll sack the ministerial servant who adjusted your microphone. That's fine. <laughs> yes. So, I see so thank you, have... you for inviting me. Uh, hi, Lloyd. Hi, Tibor. And hi, all the 400 plus viewers on the I... Lloyd Evans channel. I see you have dressed appropriately for the dedication talk. <laughs> yes, uh, it's uh, theocratic attire, as uh, I like to call it. <laughs> but the, the question is, uh, have you brought your silver sword? Definitely. It's a Bible-based talk. So, <laughs> so it, it, it could go downhill from here, or it could we could be uh, spiritually enriched. Uh, but basically, I have given Arthur permission to speak for, is it four minutes, um, giving a dedication talk. So, Arthur, it's over to you. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Hang on. I Let me have a... There we go. Throughout the centuries, Jehovah's faithful servants have used dedicated facilities that were set aside for true worship. In ancient Israel, there was the tabernacle, or the tent of meeting. After it was constructed in the wilderness, in the center of the camp of the Israelites, it became the most prominent feature of Jehovah's arrangement for approach to him by the chosen nation. The Bible account in Exodus chapter 40 presents the dedication of the tabernacle as a commandment to Moses by Jehovah. Let's open our Bibles in Exodus chapter 40 
and read verse 16. So that's Exodus chapter 40, verse 16. It reads, Moses did according to all that Jehovah had commanded him. He did just so. What was the outcome? We find the answer in verse 34. And the cloud began to cover the tent of the meeting, and Jehovah's glory filled the tabernacle. Evidently, Jehovah's presence was the sign of his approval. We find similar feelings of holy rejoicing almost 500 years later when Solomon inaugurated the temple in Jerusalem after seven years of hard labor. Because of limited time, I won't do it, but I invite you to read the inspired account in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. As spiritual Israelites, modern-day spirit-anointed Christian witnesses of Jehovah who take the lead in the worldwide preaching, teaching, and disciple-making work have similarly used dedicated facilities to support true worship. As the need became greater and greater, new and expanded kingdom halls, assembly halls, and battle complexes have been built, renovated, or upgraded to suit the needs of the organization. The ever-increasing technological advances allowed for a more effective design, planning, development, and construction of theocratic facilities. Many of us are no longer Jehovah's Witnesses. Brother Cedars has been out of the organization for eight years. But the example of our former fellow publishers is beneficial for us to carry out a life-saving work, a worldwide work of raising awareness on the dangers of undue influence by cults and helping victims of cult indoctrination to wake up and develop their exit strategy. We also heed Jesus' recommendation recorded at Mark 13, verse 37. Mark 13, verse 37. Please open your Bibles with me if you are able to. Oh, it sorry. It reads... Sorry, I should... Hang on, hang on. Sorry, Arthur. I've been too busy following the comments. Mark 13, <laughs> what? Verse, verse 37. I don't want to interrupt your stride because you were doing so well. But what I say to you, I say to all, keep on the watch. That's why we are JW Watch. We are keeping on the watch regarding development in the Watchtower organization and developments related to how damaging teachings and practices echo in the secular world. How is all of this possible? Evidently, obviously, nothing would have been accomplished without your generous contributions. It's you who donate by means of super chats, super stickers, and Patreon subscriptions. You are the ones who make this work possible and makes it grow. We all remember when Lloyd finished his first Cedars vlog using a camcorder in his unfinished apartment. We have been by his side when he had, had the bookshelf in his living room, when he received his MacBook, and when he first inaugurated the bunker. Some of us even had the sinister opportunity to witness the havoc behind the white door, as you have seen in the previous video. But in recent times, the need is greater, and we have prayerfully considered the priorities. This is why, after several months, the staff of JW Watch is proud to inaugurate the extended bunker, bunker version 2.0, and dedicated to furthering the good news, the truth about the truth. Our Heavenly Father Jehovah, we thank you for this wonderful privilege. We have been your faithful activists to, cover the to uncover the truth about the truth and raise its awareness worldwide to how damaging cults are. We dedicate this bunker on your behalf for the benefit of our worldwide viewership. Please bless the efforts of the entire JW Watch team and staff 
And please be with your Holy Spirit in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't closing my eyes. You, you're going to have to disfellowship me <laughs> from, from my own bunker. <laughs> That was fantastic. Congratulations. That was that was lovely. Thank you so much, Arthur. I know you put a lot of effort into that and it was a very nice talk and certainly the best dedication talk I've ever heard. I think that's no exaggeration. So uh, thank you so much, Arthur. Um, and uh, what did you think, Arthur? What do you make of the bunker extension? Well, it's, it's so lovely. It's uh, congrats to... To the to our faithful brothers, who they're, they're not brothers, been... they're builders. <laughs> oh, they were co they were secular contractors. Oh, they got my, paid my basically. <laughs> they got paid, yeah. <laughs> and it's not a uh, it's not a uh, uh, a special pioneer uh, subsidium or how they they call it, right? <laughs> it was literally builders who got paid. Yeah. Oh, I see. Volunteers. I see. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> But really, it's uh, it's a great job they did. Uh, I see Tibor is sitting on a very in a very comfortable spot there, and he's been doing some wonderful work. I I really appreciate his uh, his skills in video editing. Thank you. Hopefully, I people will stop uh, mistaking us for one another. Yeah, I see that <laughs> been happening a lot. So. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, his chair is a little bit too comfortable. I'm going to have to modify it to just, you know, I don't want him getting too relaxed when he's doing his job, you know? <laughs> yeah, Arthur, next to Stephen Lett, I doubt it. <laughs> Arthur, thank you so much for joining us, and thanks for your dedication talk. That was brilliant. You're very welcome. Okay, take See care, you. pal. Take, take care. care. Have a great weekend. So, then there were two. And uh, I just want to respond to a few comments and super chats. Ivan Ramos says, Lloyd, be honest with us. Did Tony and his pals at the governing body send Bethelites to the bunker for, for the upgrade using free labor? <laughs> Looks amazing. Now, as I said, all of this was done using actual paid labor. You know, that's the difference here. This was literally a project where people worked for money and they got paid and you know quite rightly because they did a fantastic job if people do a good job they should be paid um some huge huge super chats coming through thank you so much becky that's incredibly generous um becky uh, is one of my most long-standing patrons um as is um nicole Mort parker uh nicole says welcome tibor you're doing an excellent job the Bunker 2.0 looks fantastic. Congratulations, Lloyd. Perhaps this help. This will help with a microwave. Ah, I see with the super chat. Well, thank you so much, Nicole and Becky, and all of those others. In fact, uh, there's been quite a few super chats coming through. Let me list a few. Um, actually, it, the the one I haven't mentioned is Borg Assimilate. Uh, just logged on. Hello, Lloyd and friends. Thank you so much, Borg Assimilate. I'm actually interested to know whether anyone has any questions for Tibor while we have him on, because he obviously won't be on on every video. Um, maybe at some point we'll have an opportunity to kind of drill down properly. But in the meantime, if you have any questions for Tibor, now is your chance while he's still with us. Tibor, tell us about your education. What did you expect as a career? Almost certainly not editing Stephen Let Rip videos. <laughs> uh, yeah, my education is uh, my actual title is uh, a multimedia computer computing engineer, which I know it doesn't mean anything, <laughs> uh, but basically it means that I've covered uh, uh, basically a wide range of multimedia, uh, basically. Basically, the whole shebang, let's say, you know, from uh, photography, videography, some audio engineering, and yeah, it's basically like a course that spans everything. Uh, and what did I expect? Well, honestly, I wanted to work in the independent movie industry as a colorist. That was my dream gig. Then I knocked myself down to, oh, let's say I could be an editor. 
and I started pursuing the uh, gig as an editor. But with the whole COVID thing, it was, you know, jobs were few and far between. And so I just saw this ad and, it, you know, first it was in English, which was a bit odd for Croatia. And it's, yeah, I went down the rabbit hole of the John Cedars channel and here I am. Yeah, so utterly yeah. unexpected. But yeah, it was. Um, I'm really pleased at how it all turned out, and uh, we we had I think 40 different applicants, and we interviewed I think four or five, and uh, Tibor really stood out as as being exactly the right fit. There were quite a few. I interviewed um, two or three who were. Uh, they were sort of cinematographers who could also do video editing. And, you know, I, I was convinced that they could do video editing and maybe even do it better than me, but they were obviously first and foremost cinematographers and I just wanted someone who was passionate about video editing. And, and Tibor, you really hit me as being someone who was all about not just the video editing, but also getting everything technically technically right. So uh, I think we made the right decision. I know we made the right decision and I'm very, very pleased that you are with us. Uh, and I'm especially pleased that we can work together more closely. That's fantastic. Um, Likewise. Tib Tibor Knuckle is now doing the rounds. No, it's Bunker 2.0, people. It's not the Tibor Knuckle. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, oh, no. Dear. Yeah, that's, I shouldn't have read that. That's going to stick now, unfortunately. Uh, thank you so much to Vivian Marty for your very kind and generous super chat. That's a huge help. Uh, obviously, as you can all see, I'm not in the business of just sitting on pledge money. I, I very much believe, Diana and I very much believe in churning it back into the channel as much as possible, which is why we're hiring Tibor and why we're upgrading our equipment and buying a new uh, video editing computer and new camera and all this sort of thing. So... Uh, the super chats really do help to that end. Uh, Eve point Eve two point zero says the beard game is strong in the bunker. In the bunker, our beards part of the dress code. There, no, it wasn't actually mandatory on Tibor. It's just purely by coincidence that he happens to have a beard as well. As well as as far as I'm aware, I mean, maybe he's grown a beard uh, to emulate me after seeing me on the John Cedars channel, maybe he thought this would enhance his opportunities, his <laughs> prospects of getting the job. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to grow my hair as well, but I didn't have the time, so... Eh. <laughs> um, James Steele says, did you know about Jehovah's Witnesses before you started with Lloyd? Uh, I did. Uh, I was almost a JW. Uh, when my parents divorced, you know how JWs, they can sniff tragedy from a mile away. So they did try to uh, suck my mother into the whole thing. Luckily, they didn't succeed. So, yeah, I I managed to finish college. <laughs> One of the benefits. And I can celebrate so you can, my birthday. You can remember them calling at your home. Yes. Uh, the thing I can, my sister uh, remembers actually more than me. Mm. But what I can clearly remember is us being invited to like a, like a pretty fancy garden. And they, I remember them giving my mom some books, you know, and my mom would take anything that's free, you know. Oh, it, it's free. I must take something. So, yeah, I remember that. And then my sister mentioned that uh, they did actually come to our home like once or twice. But I don't remember that. So. I'll have to okay. hold her by her word. Interesting. Um, Scott Harvey says, does Tibor get weirded out by some of the stuff he edits? Got to be tough for a non-XJW. Yeah, I do get weirded out. And there are some uh, situations where I have to like quickly message Lloyd on WhatsApp, you know, is this real? <laughs> because uh, some of the views are like straight out of like 15th century or whatever. So I just think to myself, oh, how, just how, you know, it's 2021. How is this still happening? How is it? How are we still here? But yeah, I do Absolutely. get weirded out. You and me both. You and me both. <laughs> um Christy says, Tibor, do you have any cats? 
Oh, sadly not. My sister does, though. She's a animal lover, so she does have a cat. Um, Christy says, good choice, Lloyd. Um, and Kitra says, glad you're here, Tibor. I'm sure you'll do an excellent job. Is doing an excellent job. He's uh, very, very much impressing me and Diana. And in fact, I think everyone, everyone's commenting on the increase in production values. And, you know, my pride isn't in any way harmed here because, you know, I hired Tibor very consciously thinking, I don't want someone who can edit videos as well as me. I want someone who can edit videos better than me. And uh, that's what we definitely got. Um, oh, <laughs> Tibor's going to love this question. Oh, uh, no. Tibor, do you use Adobe Suite to edit videos or other software? Uh, could we skip this one? Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> I... I really don't want to turn this into like a two-hour rant, so uh, I, I will politely say no, I do not use Adobe's uh, excellent products. I use DaVinci Resolve. Uh, yeah, we, we or I use uh, DaVinci Resolve Studio. It's more than good enough for everything, and it doesn't crash like 60 times a day, which is, I mean, a, a great feature. So yeah, I'm sticking with DaVinci Resolve. Yeah, that was actually another thing that impressed me was how passionate he was about DaVinci Resolve, which I'd sort of heard of as being, you know, very much the thing that professionals use. And I did repeatedly offer for him to use Adobe Suite, which I have like a subscription to if he wanted it. And yeah, he's firmly, he's sticking to his guns. He refuses <laughs> to use it. Um Nesbo says, Tibor, are there any particular videos or themes from Lloyd's back catalogue that you would like to get your teeth into? I guess the 607 is the most immediate one, isn't it? Um, uh, yeah, that's what we are actually getting our teeth into. But what I would like to uh, update is, well, basically the top 10 videos, you know, by views, our most popular videos or Lloyd's most popular videos. I would really like to update them, you know, the stuff about... Uh, uh, top 10 things that Jehovah's Witnesses don't know about their own religion, uh, stuff about some celebrities. And yeah, that's what I would like to, because I mean, people obviously love those videos. So I think we should bring them up to the current standard. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, we're, it's one of those things where we're having to choose which videos are, we need to prioritize in terms of, um, but, you know, because the originals did their job and hopefully continue to do their job. The 607 video, for example, is on how many views now? Over 100,000 or thereabouts. Um, but we just, you know, it, it's one of those subjects that is really, well, if you fully grasp the subject uh, or the arguments as a Jehovah's Witness, it's, it, you know, the whole house of cards comes tumbling down and um, we just felt that it was worthwhile again, now that we have all of this equipment, just going back and doing it properly. And, you know, we can have both. We can have the original and we can have the new one. Uh, Monica Owens, thank you so much for your super chat, which I can't display for some reason. Monica says, welcome, Tibor. I am so grateful to Lloyd and this channel. Great work. Thank you so much, Monica. Uh, Zenobia says, thank you, bringing some levity to my morning, Lloyd. I hope to join you soon in your activism efforts. That's wonderful. Yeah, the more the merrier, quite frankly. Um, and thank you also to, have I mentioned Vivian Marti? Perhaps I have. Uh, really nice to see so many people supporting uh, the channel. Uh, Borg Assimilate says, Tibor, will you put together... Oh, no, don't encourage him. Uh, <laughs> will you put together... <laughs> An outtakes video of Lloyd one day and post it. God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, th there was a particular video which had a lot of material, you know. It, <laughs> it would produce a whole outtakes uh, reel for itself. So maybe we'll see. I have to uh, get Lloyd's blessing for that. But <laughs> well, we went through a phase, in all seriousness, where because of the configuration of the new equipment, basically before the camera I'm shooting on now is obviously the camera that I use for now for all my videos. 
And I now have this remote control so that I can just film when I need to speak or when I need to be on camera. But before this remote control arrived, I had to film everything. And that, that would mean that there would be situations, for example, where there was just weird noises coming from outside the bunker. Maybe uh, Jessica was playing a flute right outside the bunker door. Or maybe someone was just randomly beating a piece of wood against a wall, which is what it sounded like. Uh, and it was just happening one after the other in quick succession, and it was making me lose my mind. So, yeah, he's he's got too much power now, unfortunately, Tibor. He's got all of these all of this incriminating material on me. God, that's, that's going to give me nightmares now. <laughs> um, let me just scroll through, uh, see if there are any more. Lloyd Evans channel bloopers. That would be fantastic. No, it wouldn't, Monica. Don't encourage Tibor. Don't encourage him. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> let's just see here. Let me just censor some of these comments about bloopers. Um... Natalie says, what does Tibor mean in his native language? Does it mean Steve? Uh, no, Steve would be Stepan. Okay. Uh, in Croatia. No, T uh, Tibor is actually, uh, it's it's a bit of a, there's a war going on uh, on the origin of the name Tibor. Some say it's uh, like is Roman. It a bitterly contested and bloody war are the many casualties yeah many casualties okay. yeah so basically there's uh two forces trying to own it uh basically it's the hungarians and the well italians or romans let's say uh so i don't know i think the meaning is something like uh the wise one or something it's you know something some bs okay. like that uh not sure though don't quote don't quote me on that, but yeah, it's it's so not basically Steve. what you're saying is that you're wise. That's what that's what we all yeah. take away from this. Okay, and, and humble, you know, so and humble <laughs> as well. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, Carl Koenig Matusen, I've almost certainly butchered the pronunciation. Says Tibor, if you need a break from all the work, just behind Lloyd, there are so much fun literature for a good laugh. Yeah, why haven't you been reading any of my books so far, Tibor? What's with that? I barely got to your actual books, so uh, yeah. When I finish the Reluctant Apostate, then I'll get to the the other side of the spectrum. So, yeah. Nesbo, <laughs> Nesbo says we could always do with a proper music video for Good Things, Bad Things. Mm, that's an interesting idea. Yeah. Okay. Drone yeah, shots. Sure. Dramatic winds, windswept vista on the Croatian coast. Yeah. I'm digging it. Um, Joelle Brown says, Tibor, which JW belief is the most mind-boggling to you? Oh, let me think about that. Uh, the most mind-boggling. The whole blood transfusion thing, that's sort of just how. But if I had to pick something that's kind of ridiculous, you know, just for no good reason, would be the birthday celebrations that's that seems like just so random, you know, at least the blood transfusion thing has some, basically some uh, foundation, you know, they could at least say, oh, blood is sacred, you know, and many uh, religions do rely on the sanctity of blood. But yeah, the birthday thing is just, <laughs> why? <laughs> just why? What, what's the point? Oh, yeah, because the, the, we obviously did um, traumatize by a cupcake, didn't we? And uh that would have been quite a, a reality check for you, I'm sure. Um, oh, <laughs> Seth Weldman says, are we going to see more long form videos, short form or mix? Honestly, mix, uh, it really depends on what we're talking about. You know, some things you simply cannot do as a short form video. And trust me, and Tibor will tell you this as well, the shorter the video, the easier it is to make. You know, but some videos just need to be long to do it justice and to explain complicated issues. But one thing we are doing now, obviously, is the sushis. Um, so we take our full length rebuttals, FLRs, we're calling them, and we chop them up into sushis. And that makes it hopefully 
easier for these to be accessible to those who don't have such a long attention span or just frankly don't have enough time to watch the full length rebuttals. So we are trying to make it so that there's something for everyone, but there will always be, for as long as I'm doing this, long videos. But there will, I think there's more of a choice now than there was perhaps a few months ago. That's fair, isn't it, Tibor? Yeah, and with the Patreon backlog, there are definitely going to be more long form videos in the few, I mean, like a couple of months. So, mm. yeah. But yeah, so what, you're talking about the voted clear, videos. Yeah, yeah the, when the when we get through the voted videos backlog, then it will be mostly shorter forms. But yeah, we try to balance it out, you know, because we do realize that there are basically two audiences. You know, there's the short form and there's the long form audience. So we try to cater to everyone. Mm. So, yeah. Renato says, I'm buying Tibor a subscription to Adobe Suite <laughs> as a birthday gift. That's kind of interesting. Isn't it? Really generous. Yeah, that, that's actually the worst smut that Renato has <laughs> <laughs> managed to say so far. Yeah, I could get behind everything else, but come on, Renato, oh, show dear. some class. Show some yeah. class. He's getting enraged. Don't make Tibor angry. That's a lesson I've learned. Um, so, W Zukon says, "Do you have any remote location video shoots planned, like the Dino Park video?" Short answer is yes, COVID permitting, because we now have, uh, you know, when I went to Dino Park Fontana uh, to make uh, Jehovah's Witnesses and Dinosaurs, or is it Dinosaurs and Jehovah's Witnesses? I can't remember. That was sort of the last video I made that was with the old tech and without Tibor. And I, when we when we did uh, Return to the Bunker and more recently the Shunned Fight Back, it really showed me what potential we now have now that there's two of us. Because previously, when I was doing uh, documentaries like Reclaim Voices or The Polish Exodus and obviously Jehovah's Witnesses and Dinosaurs, um, it, I was basically a one-man film crew and you do sort of, that's being a bit unfair probably, certainly in the case of the Polish Exodus and Reclaimed Voices because we did actually have people who were volunteering and who got involved with handling the sound and that sort of thing but it, it's it's a world away from doing that and having someone who you're working with all the time so that you know each other's moves uh, you understand the process, you understand what you're aiming to get, and you have the right equipment. And I noticed a huge step up in terms of ease of production when we were doing those last two, you could say, micro documentaries. Um, are you happy with how those those particular projects came together, Tibor? Yeah, uh, the return to the bunker was a bit of a mess, but honestly, there was no way to plan it. There was no way to, and we didn't have all of the equipment. So yeah, basically, we considering that we we needed to do some, you know, basically to scrape everything together to. Well, we didn't uh, have the Sony, and we were also kind of disoriented by working remotely because I was in Istria for most of that, wasn't I? Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, we had the action cam we didn't even have the gimbal for it and we just tried not to get into people's way because there they were actual <laughs> i mean i don't want to sound disrespectful but they were actual reporters uh so yeah considering we didn't plan anything we didn't even know if we were going to petrinia until the last minute and everything yeah i think it came out really well and you know almost the same could be said about the shunt fight back because uh, we didn't know where exactly we were going. Uh, what we were told was going to be there was quite a bit different than what actually was. But then again, I, you know, it came out, I think, great, considering I had basically zero practice with the new gimbal and everything, and there was very little planning involved. I think once we actually do go on a planned shoot, it will be amazing. Yeah. But the the point is, you know, I noticed a different. You have to understand from my perspective as someone who's used to literally holding my own camera or setting up a tripod, and then it, it's it made a world of difference for me having you 
on board and also I think everyone noticed the step up in quality using the new Sony A7S 3 camera um, and so basically short answer to the question is yes there will be remote location uh, video shoots and, and more documentaries now that we have the gear and we have the personnel it's just purely a case of Covid and I think I think that's more or less the case across the film production sort of TV production sphere, isn't it? Everyone's sort of hands are tied to at least some degree when it comes to travel restrictions and that kind of thing. But for example, if not for COVID, I would have been flying out to Belgium to actually cover the, the case there. Um, but it would have been very problematic to do that. So yeah, there will be many more, um, you could say, high production value uh, documentaries coming and Tibor will be heavily involved, not just in the editing, but also in the filming. Um, let me just uh, see which questions I should look at. Uh, oh, Scott Harvey says, surely we need to close with a song. Where's Arthur gone? He's still here, although he's... Arthur, why aren't you wearing a tie anymore? <laughs> oh, that's a shame. He's muted. I was going to ask him to play a song, but unfortunately his audio... I, is... uh, I had oh. to let go of my uh, my theocratic attire. I, <laughs> I Are you in the breakout myself. You're in the breakout room already, aren't you, on Zoom? Yes, Let's I, face uh, it. I <laughs> clad myself out of the... Uh, of the JW attire, and I'm back as uh, an, a regular apostate uh, dude here on the channel. Is is there a song that you'd like to regale us with before we conclude? Mm, I haven't prepared one. I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to Tibor. Oh. oh. <laughs> 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 but is there one Tibor? No, I forgot my instruments at home, but yeah, <laughs> ne next time, next time T for sure. Tibor's thinking, this is not on my job description. Um, <laughs> Arthur, seriously, Arthur, did you have a song that you... Uh, no, no I, I, no, I don't have one now. Nothing at all? This is this is one for the books. Yeah. You're invited to sing and you, you don't have anything. I, ha I haven't received a singing invitation. I was invited to do the talk. Okay, fair enough. I, I appreciate your modesty. <laughs> okay. Um, in that case, go back to the breakout room. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Um, <laughs> that took me by surprise. I thought he would sing something. Um, ben Will says, I prefer longer videos. Unfortunately, looks like mainstream America just getting shorter attention span, which saddens me. I suppose so. I think, look, if you're going to be successful, if you're going to be massive on YouTube, everyone knows you need to keep those video lengths as short as possible. My attitude is, uh, you know, the video, it will be as long as it needs to be. And if it needs to be two or three hours, it's going to be two or three hours, you know, especially when we're talking about convention rebuttals and that sort of thing. I'm, I'm going to say what needs to be said, no matter how long it's going to take. Um, but as we said earlier, we do uh, want to try and make sure there's something for everyone on the channel. And I think we're doing that more now. And it's easier to do it now that Tibor's on board. Uh, I'm just seeing if there are any final questions for me to throw at Tibor. Does anyone have any other questions? I guess the main questions have been, stop pre pressuring him to... S oh, I think, do you mean Arthur Renato or Tibor? <laughs> and, anyway. Um... <laughs> Tibor Regalas, says Amanda. Okay. Uh, maybe later, and maybe Tibor's going to chew my head off once this is over, saying, why are you pressuring me to sing? This is workplace bullying. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing any further questions. I guess we've covered most of the main issues, haven't we? Um, Deborah D says, Lloyd, I think it's great your in-laws let you have the bunker for your work. Yes, it is. I suppose that should be sort of mentioned that... It is very gracious of them. I think it's one of those situations where, you know, you have to, um, there have, there's always going to be compromises when you have, you know, two families essentially living together, al although really it's one family. But we live in one half of the house, they live in the other half. 
and the basement was traditionally a basement that we both used and I think what I think the tipping point was when Julie was born and we just said look our family's growing we need more space I need to be able to work somewhere that's not in our literally in our living room and that kind of thing and they were very gracious and I seem to remember at the time when once they saw how nice the bunker was I think they even said, oh, if we'd have known it was going to be this nice, we would have given you the whole thing, you know? And I was like, I actually would have taken the whole thing if you'd offered it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, it's they've always, I think, their humanity has always shone through, not just with this, but also with not shunning us. Um, and this sort of shows what a spectrum of belief you can have among Jehovah's Witnesses. You can be fully devout believers in the governing body's authority but still see the need to support your family to con to keep in touch with your family to not shun your family and to you know make reasonable concessions and with the bunker 2.0 one thing i did make sure i did before we converted it was make sure that they had space for all of their equipment and tools and what have you somewhere else which was uh why tibor came one day and we built a shed together didn't we tibor yeah, but it, um, that was quite an adventure. That was an adventure. So, yeah, we've they they have been very accommodating, but also on my side, I've done my best to uh, make sure that they that I'm as as responsible as possible, basically. Uh, and I it, it <laughs> I intended to include some Jehovah's Hand stories because one thing you often get with obviously Jehovah's Witness propaganda um videos when it touches on building projects is they will throw in a only with jehovah's hand could this have been possible and for me it's the tiles did we see the floor on your thing i, I don't think we quite saw it tibor Are you yeah i don't think we did okay anyway um the tiles for bunker 1.0 obviously were bought two years ago and when we went to the shop to buy, to choose the tiles for Bunker 2.0, we managed to, I'd, I'd saved one of the old tiles and I took it along thinking, well, we need to find one that's as close to this tile, to this floor tile as possible so that it matches as much as possible. So I took it along to the shop and lo and behold, we didn't just find one that matched, we found the same tiles. They were still... <laughs> They were still selling the same tiles two years later. So that means that the entire bunker has the same tiles from one end to the other, even though one half was bought two years later. Only with Jehovah's hand <laughs> would something like this be possible. I'm sure you can all agree with me there. Um, so any final questions before we go? Um, did he bring the sand says Ben, no, unfortunately, Jehovah didn't supply any sand. We were let down there, unfortunately. Paul McCann says, make a Tibor shirt. That might require some negotiations with Tibor's representatives because <laughs> last I heard, he drives a hard bargain when it comes to his image rights. So, yeah, watch this space. <laughs> um Louise Bush says, love the bunker and all your videos. Appreciate both of your hard work watching from New Zealand. Thank you so much, Louise. And I'm glad that you find the channel helpful. Um, yes, people already asking whether Tibor has a merch range. I, I think there's uh, opportunities there, Tibor. We need yeah. to discuss this. I can point them in your direction. People who want <laughs> to buy Tibor merch. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, and I think that is about it we'll just conclude with misty's comment thank you lloyd and tibor for all your work congrats on the bunker 2.0 uh have i got all of the super chats there was one from trent coleman the first time i watched a lloyd evans video the closing song made me cry will you please continue to use that song yes that song is not forever sung by dina smith and yes i have no intention of uh, of letting go of that song. So that will continue to be the channel's theme. Um, I'm just trying to make sure I've got everyone. I think I have included everyone's super chat. So thank you to everyone who 
has sent in super chats. That's extremely helpful. Thank you to the hundreds of you who've tuned in to the live stream. I hope you found our reveal of the Bunker 2.0 interesting. And a big welcome to Tibor, our fantastic video editor. Tibor, thank you for joining our team and bringing your skills to the channel. Oh, thank you for having me. So viewers, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe to the Lloyd Evans channel for more such videos. And Tibor. And thank you for watching. <laughs>